All right, hello, and welcome to our podcast on indefinite pronouns and agreement. It's probably best if you've watched our other podcast on personal pronouns and case first, and then watch this one to kind of continue that journey down the look at pronouns and how they agree. If you haven't watched that first one, it's totally okay. You can probably pick this up as they are a little bit different than our other types of pronouns, but it is nice to watch these things in a series. So this is number two in that series, indefinite pronouns. So let's review for a second. Do we remember this chart? This is our personal pronoun chart. These are the 26 pronouns that are in the subjective case or the objective case or possessive pronouns that are used to replace specific people, nouns, individuals, objects. Meaning we have to have a specific something in mind in order to replace them with a personal pronoun. We can't say he and not know who that he is. It's probably Johnny or Jimmy or Frankie. Same with her, same with you. We need to know who the specific replacement is when we use personal pronouns. And so again, our recommendation is make sure you memorize this chart. Make sure you understand the difference between first person, second person, third person, and then the columns of singular and plural. And if you don't remember those, revisit our other podcasts. We spend a little bit more time on this chart. Now, the focus of this podcast is to talk about what are called indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns do not refer to any one specific person or group. They are not definite, or if you use the prefix that means not, they are indefinite. For example, anyone can do that. Well, who is anyone? I mean, literally, it can be anyone. It's not a specific person. Therefore, the pronoun we're going to use, instead of saying any person, is going, just going to be the pronoun of anyone. Number two, each of the students is responsible for homework or someone must be in charge. I mean, by the very definition of it, someone is indefinite. We don't know who that is. There is no name. If we want to say that Tommy is in charge, we would use he, because we know that Tommy is he. But since we're not sure and it's indefinite, we would use the indefinite pronoun of someone. Now, stop for a second and try to remember back to either previous podcasts or things that you've learned in your grammatical studies. Please remember that the subject of a clause, whether that's an independent clause, which is a complete sentence, or a dependent clause, the subject of a clause is never in a prepositional phrase. So as we try to figure out subject and verb agreement, we have to find the true subject of a sentence. Therefore, in these examples, be sure we're finding the true subject of the sentence, not the prepositional phrase. And so we're not even talking pronouns yet, but we need to review this a little bit because a lot of these indefinite pronouns then use prepositional phrases to help them agree. For example, number one, the leader of the gangs is tough. The subject of that sentence is leader. There is one leader. Therefore, it takes a singular verb, which is is. Now, it says of the gangs right next to the verb. So isn't it supposed to be the leader of the gangs are tough? No, double check. The subject of the sentence cannot be in that prepositional phrase, which is underlined. Therefore, the subject is leader. The subject is singular. Therefore, the verb has to be singular also, and in this case, is. Number two, the challenge of the competitors is great. Again, the subject is challenge, not competitors. A lot of people want to make the assumption that the word closest to the verb must be the subject, and those are the two words that we must make agree. Sometimes they are. Oftentimes, as you get into more complicated pieces of writing, they are not. So find the true subject, the simple subject, the one word subject of the sentence, and that cannot be in a prepositional phrase. So we look at the word challenge. Challenge is singular. 
therefore we take a singular verb, and in this case again it is is. Last one there just to show the opposite. The answers to the question are varied. So it looks like one question with many answers are possible. Again, the grammatical subject is answers, and therefore the verb must be plural, and so we use the verb of are. Even though the word question is right next to it, question is not the subject because it's in a prepositional phrase. Subjects are not in prepositional phrases. So, let's go back to our indefinite pronouns here. These are singular indefinite pronouns, meaning when you see them used as pronouns, they take singular verb forms. So go ahead and pause this now, maybe take a look at these, write them down in your notes. But these ones are singular indefinite pronouns. Okay, welcome back. So let's go ahead and see some of these in action. So if we're looking at examples of singular indefinite pronouns, we might have a sentence like this. One of the students is correct. Now again, you got to find the true subject of this sentence, and in this case, the true subject is the word one, not students. Even though students is close to the verb, students is not the grammatical subject because it's in the prepositional phrase. Therefore, if your subject is one, it's singular and it takes a singular verb, which is is. Number two, somebody here has the right answer. Again, subject is somebody. Somebody is singular. Therefore, the verb form must be singular also, and that is has. Last one there, neither of the dogs is ready to run. So again, our indefinite pronoun is neither, that is singular, and it takes the singular verb is. This next batch of indefinite pronouns are plural, meaning they will take a plural verb form when they are used as pronouns. So again, go ahead and pause this, write these down in your notes, and we will show some examples in a second. So here are some examples using plural indefinite pronouns. Both of the students are ready. Again, the subject is both. It's plural. Therefore, the verb it must agree with is are. Both are ready. You cannot say both is ready because is is singular. Number two, several of the players run home. You can't say several of the players runs home. Several is plural. Run is plural. And then the last one there, many of the dogs are here. Again, subject is many, verb is are. Our last chunk of indefinite pronouns are probably the most confusing. These are the indefinite pronouns that can take either singular or plural verbs, depending on the context that they are used in. So a little confusing. They're kind of like chameleon-like. They kind of change to fit their surroundings. And unfortunately, that's kind of how they are. So we just need to get used to that. But here's the list. So go ahead and pause the podcast again. Write these down and think about these for a couple of minutes. But these are examples of indefinite pronouns that could either be singular or plural, depending on the sentences they're in. So here's some examples of sentences that are using these indefinite pronouns. It could be both singular or plural, depending on the context. So number one, all of the classes are here. Again, the subject has to be not in a prepositional phrase. Therefore, the subject is all. And so in this case, all are here. Okay, fine. Second sentence, all of the class is here. Oh, interesting. The subject again is all, but in this case, it's singular. All is here. Number three, most of the students are correct. And then the last example, most of the student was in the room when the bell rang. So on this slide, we have the proper subjects highlighted, all or most. They are properly agreeing with the verbs, but you can see the question in the upper right. This is where you're going to use the prepositional phrase 
or more context around the subject to influence agreement. So if you notice in the first pair, it says all of the classes are here, as in like many classes are arriving at a school assembly or something. The bottom one, all of the class is here. Even though it's multiple students in a class, it's still just one singular class. Therefore, in the top one, all is plural. There's more than one. So it's all are here for the assembly. But then number two, all is here, ready to start class. So all of the class, meaning all of the students, is here. Now, this is kind of weird because even though class is made up of multiple kids, 20 to 40, however many you have in your class, the word class is singular. So if we use class, it's singular. All of the class is here. If we change it to all of the students, then what does it become? It becomes all of the students are here. Okay, so your, your subject is still all, but you are now using that prepositional phrase right next to it to help you determine agreement. And so when we change these into interrogative forms or question forms, we still may have to restructure the sentence and put it in a statement form to double check our agreement. So for example, is all of the cake devoured? We would rearrange that and go, yes, all of the cake is devoured. Therefore, all in this case is singular because cake is singular. And that helps us inform all as to whether it's going to be singular or plural. Are all of the pastries gone? Yes, all of the pastries are gone. All is still our subject, but we're using of the pastries to inform all that it's going to take a plural verb this time. So let's go ahead and take a minute here, see how we can do on a little bit of practice. Read each sentence and see if you can determine which verb form is appropriate based on the indefinite pronouns that you are given. And here are the answers for those. Here's a little bit more practice. Go ahead and pause this again and see how you do. And so the last thing we want to leave you with in terms of this podcast and indefinite pronouns is the idea and the warning that we need to make sure that we are looking at these indefinite pronouns as pronouns and then these agreement rules fall into place. And the reason we mention that is because many of these pronouns can also be used as adjectives. And so we're making this a little bit more complicated with those other parts of speech. But we need to be clear. How are these words being used? If they are being used as a pronoun, meaning they're standing in as an indefinite pronoun, then these rules of singular, plural, or could go either way come into play. If they are being used as adjectives, then those rules come into play also. For example, you can see at the bottom the word of most. Most of the kids are present today. And then the second sentence, most kids are present today. Let's go ahead and look at those in a little bit more depth. So here are those sentences explained a little bit. The first one, most of the kids are present today. The word most is used as an indefinite pronoun. And since most is one of those words that could go either way, we then check off and look at the prepositional phrase to help us. In this case, most of the kids takes the plural verb of are. Now if we go to the bottom, the word most is used as an adjective, and it further describes kids. It answers the questions of which kids? Well, most kids are present today. And in this particular example, both of those sentences are going to take plural verbs in the form of are. But there are times where the indefinite pronoun of one sentence, if it is slightly changed and then used adjective, that could change the agreement. So definitely make sure and look at the simple subject of the sentences, figure out what you're looking at, what is the simple subject, is it an indefinite pronoun, as in the first one, which is most, or is it some other word, such as kids, in the second sentence? And then most is just being used as an adjective. 
And so be very careful about what you're looking at grammatically and then create your agreement patterns from there. So that's about it. That is a lot of information, but hopefully you can stop this a lot and figure things out as you go. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class and we'll go from there. Thanks for listening and we will see you soon.